In this video, we will talk about task and the annotation scale and how it gets used in the Modout workflow. First of all, what are tasks? Tasks are a set of tools in order to perform a certain job within the DGN file. To get to your task, it is this tab over to the left right here that says task. And if you hover over top of it, you'll be able to see all the tasks that are underneath there. I'm going to pin it to the side for now, that way we can see it all throughout this video. If you don't want it pinned and it gets pulled back as a tab, you can always go back over here and click on this unpin and it will unpin it. Modot utilizes tasks for its drafting CAD standards to enable their users to place standardized items like lines, cells, patterns, dimensions, text, and so forth. The task will enable the users to just do a single left click on that particular item and it will automatically place in the DGN file. Whether it brings up place line tool, it'll set up all the attributes for that. Or if you click on a certain cell, it'll load up that cell from a cell library and allow you to place it on that sheet accordingly. So that's what the tasks are. And we'll go into detail on some of those different aspects here in a little bit. The annotation scale that is whenever you would come in here and set your annotation scale to whatever size the border is. That way your line styles will show up correctly. Your cells that need to be scaled up or down according to that scale will size correctly. Your text will be placed correctly, dimensioning, and all the other tools that utilizes the annotation. I know for this particular example, the border that's around this geometry is a 100 scale. So I'm going to set it to that. That way all the stuff shows up correctly. And we'll come back to that to show you what it will do if you change it to some other scale. With our CAD standards, we have three different tasks that we have set up. We have the design, the survey, and the bridge. If you're in the design section, you'd probably use the design CAD standards. Survey, you'd use the survey CAD standards. And of course, bridge would use the bridge CAD standards. Now, the standards that we have set up underneath here is just for standard detailing purposes. There are certain tools in the civil or geopack side of it that you may have to use a feature. That way everything comes, comes in correctly and it can use that particular feature in the civil tools, which are these here at the top. But that will be demonstrated underneath the geopack classes and what needs to be done with that. And also you may need to use some other tool versus just a standard microstation tool in order for the civil geometry to work correctly. An example of that would be underneath the civil tools. You'll see a bunch of different tasks underneath there for analyzing your general geometry, horizontal and vertical terrains and so forth. But if you go underneath horizontal, just for an example here, you'll see that you can place a line between points here. You can place a circle here using the horizontal geometry. And utilizing those tools will allow you to use a lot of the civil tools that are set up underneath the civil tools or the geopack tools underneath here. But like I said, for this video here, we're just going to talk about the standard drafting um, tools that are out there. And then if you need to use the other tools for the civil aspect, you would need to look at documentation for that for the geopack tools. So if I go back to the MoDOT Design CAD standards, and I will go ahead and click on it, it will expand the last one that you had opened up which I had general annotation expanded. I'll expand that back down by clicking on it. And you'll see all the different groups underneath there. And basically these are broken out by the type of sheet that you're working with. Whether it's title sheet, erosion control, signing, and so forth. What you would need to do is depending on what sheet that you're working with, you would click on that particular group. That way it brings up all the stuff that kind of corresponds to that particular type of sheet. Now there are some general ones underneath there for like general annotation. You need to click on it, it'll give you all the general annotation for if you're doing it on any of the sheets like for your notes and your text and dimensioning. Those are all located underneath there. If you're doing a pattern, you can expand that out and you'll see some different scales and I'll come back to that here later on. But underneath the scale you'll see all the different types of hatching that you can put underneath there. Now, for an example of how the task work, I'm going to go to the one that says Plan Sheets Geometry, and I'll click on it, and the CMP RC pipes was expanded out, and you're going to see some different groups underneath there, kind of broken out, depending on what area that you're working with. 
I'm going to click on the one that says CMP RCP pipes and you'll see all the pipes underneath there and whenever I click on one of these and I'll use the 60 inch new pipe you'll notice if I hover over top of it it'll show me what tool that it will use where it says play smart line and also if you look to the icon to the left of it it'll kinda give you an indication of what tool that it's gonna bring up which for this one here is the play smart line so if I click on it number one it brings up the suggested tool to use and then number two it loads up the attributes here at the top for that particular line that I'm placing places on the correct level color style and weight now if I'm ready to place that line I can come out here and place that line left click once left click twice lines been drawn on those attributes so that's what the task does it loads up the suggested tool to use and loads up the attributes of that or that particular task that you selected this time I will come in here and do something a little bit different I'll come back to my plane sheets geometry and maybe I want to put some flared in sections on the end of these pipes so I'll go to the one that says flared in section and I can use the metal concrete or safety slope depending on what in section that you need and since I placed a 60 inch pipe on there I'm going to use a 60 inch flared in section you'll see that it's going to bring up a different icon now because I'm placing a cell now click on it this one here says place active line terminator here's where you have to define where you want to place it at and it'll show you down in the lower left hand corner it says identify element where do you want to place that flared in section on the end of the pipe of course so I'll hover over the end of the pipe I'll left click on it and then I'll left click again to accept it because it says accept or reject I'm going to left click to accept it and it should place that flared in section on the end of that pipe which whenever I zoomed in you'll see that it's attached then I can do the same thing for the other end left click once left click again place that flared in section on the end of that pipe now it does have these little blue dash lines on here those are construction elements for other aspects in the the civil tools or the geopack tools if you want those turned off what you can do is go to your view attributes and turn constructions off the way it's not shown or you can use the F5 key which will turn off anything in the DGN file that's on a construction attribute which it did right there now I'll come back I showed you how that worked like I said the task that's what it does it had standards that are set up for you you place your stuff according to the CAD standards everything's pretty well set up this time I'm gonna go through and go to my traffic control sheets and we're gonna do maybe place some signs in this sheet so I'll go down to the one that says signs and I'll place a couple signs in this DGN file um, simply left click on one you should bring that sign on the end of your cursor like what it is right now and then you place it wherever it needs to go I'll place this one there I'll place this next one right here and another one right here you do have on certain sections in the task a cell selector if you click on it it'll actually show you the cells before you place it so if you want a visual of it you'll be able to see that sign and whenever you do that you just scroll to the sign that you need and once you find it you should be able to just left click on it it'll load up in the place active cell for your active cell come out here left click place it and you're finished so if you see the cell selector inside of your task here you can also use that and you'll see basically what it does is it'll give you the same cells that are all the way down through this listing now let's go back and let's play some text so I'll go back to my MoDOT design CAD standards and this time I will go to the one that says MoDOT small text click on it it brings up the text editor word processor and also brings up the place text tool of the correct attributes of what it should have for placing small text so if I come in here and I place some small text and 
now you'll see it on the end of your cursor left click to place it and you're done or if I want to do large text I can come in here and click on large text and load up everything that it needs for large text come out here and place it by left clicking to drop it off and you're finished same thing for dimensioning if I need to place dimensioning I'll use the one that says dimension small loads up everything for that I'll leave my settings the way they are you could come in here and change your alignment or your location I'm just gonna leave it set for right now and if I want to dimension this I can dimension it but you'll see my arrowheads are correct the size of my text is correct and everything just by simply coming in here left clicking it from my task now one question that you may be thinking right now is can I change my dimensioning to do something else say instead of putting text here at the top I also want it at the bottom of my dimension line or even whenever I place text maybe I want to put a box around it or maybe just change the attributes of it a little bit can you do that yes you can so if I come in here and place a small dimension if I click on my dimension styles to load up my dimension styles and I go to units and I click on the one that says show secondary units and then I can close it out you may see that that dimension style may change and that's what we're using now whenever it places text or places dimensioning in the file it's actually loading a style that's set up in a cell library to place that dimension or that text in there correctly but you can change it for whatever situation that you have so now if I come out here and I place a dimension not only is that text going to be above it you're also going to have that secondary unit below it or let's say I want to come in here and in, for whatever reason maybe I want to change my arrowhead from open to filled now if I come out here and place a dimension you'll see that I have a filled arrowhead along with my text being above and below my dimension line and those settings will stay as long as you don't come back in here and select it from the task so I go back to my main toolbar and go to my dimension tools and I select some other dimensioning type maybe instead of dimension element I go to dimension linear those settings will stay the exact same way from the last time that you had it so if I come out here and I left click once drag it across to dimension to the middle of it define where I want to place that left click and drop it off and I could keep going you'll see that it'll stay to those last settings that I had now if I come back over to my task and click on it from here what it's going to do is grab that dimension style from the DGN library that we have set up as our standard and it's going to load up those attributes for it so if you try to dimension now look like it should from our standard so yes you can change it but whenever you change it if you do come back over here and select it it's going to load up from the DGN library and it will do the same thing for your text which I'm not going to show it but it will do the same thing if you set up your text that's out there for or slant or whatever it'll stay to those settings unless you come back over here and click on it again now if we come back to the annotation scale which I haven't really gone over yet but we'll go over it now that needs to be set to the size of the border that's attached to the sheet and I know on this particular sheet it's a 1 to 100 scale border now if you come in here and change that you'll see let's say I change it to 1 to 50 you'll see that all my dimensioning and my cells and my text and my line styles automatically change on the fly to that particular scale that you set it to whether it's a 1 to 20 1 to 200 1 to 500 whatever scale that you set it to it'll automatically do it on the fly so that's how everything gets scaled up or scaled down in the sheet how it'll show up in, on the sheet that needs to be set correctly that way it prints out correctly 
and also later on whenever those PDF files get created into contract plans PDF files whatever this is set to that is how your sheets gonna print out so whatever you have it set to here and how it's visualizing here it's how it's gonna print out to your PDF file or to a print that you send it to to a plotter certain cells will not scale up or scale down though these cells here like for your traffic control signs and there's many other ones to also they scale up or down according to your annotation scale cells that do not need to be scaled up take for instance like this flared in section where it needs to be drawn to scale and stayed drawn to scale those will not scale up so if I change that to 1 to 20 you'll see that that particular flared in section didn't do anything so there are certain cells that scale up and down in our environment and there are certain cells that will stay one to one for quantity purposes and other aspects the last thing that I'm going to talk about in this video is patterns so if I come back over here to my task and I click on the one that says patterns you'll notice here that we have one that says 5 scale, 10 scale, 20 scale and so forth this is because patterns will not scale up and down with the annotation scale that is a flaw in the product as of right now so it will not scale up and down according to the annotation scale hopefully that will be fixed in the future but for now we have to work with it so what we have done is for placing patterns is number one know what scale that your border is and then number two whenever you place that pattern click on that group that corresponds to your border which this one here is a one to one under scale if you expand it down you'll see all the patterns that you can place in our MoDOT scheme so if you need to place let's say a crosshatch you would simply select it it loads up the crosshatch tool sets up all the attributes for it you define how you want to place that hatch, whether it's the element or flood, union, intersection, difference, points, whatever method that you need to do. Come in here, and I'm just going to use the element for this example. Select that particular element, left click again to accept it, and place that cross hatch to the correct scale or spacing, depending on what kind of hatch or pattern that you're placing. For this other example, I'll come in here and place rock. I'll select it. Brings up the pattern area tool. And now this time I will just use the flood method, just to use a different method. I'll click inside here, left click again to accept it, and place that rock pattern according to what it should be for a 100 scale border. But, like I said, it will not change according to your annotation scale. You'll see that it will stay stagnant. In the future, this is supposed to be replaced to use annotation scale, but it does not right now. So an overview. The task, this is where our CAD standards are set up at for our drafting standards, whether you're in design or survey or bridge. And then also, the annotation scale is set here at the top depending on what scale your sheet is, whether it's a 1 to 100, 1 to 50 scale sheet, or if you're in bridge, you may have these other scales down below here for your bridge detailing sheets. If you have any questions on using tasks or the annotation scale or if you run into any issues with that, feel free to contact us at CAT Support and we'll be happy to help you out.